Hi everybody and big welcome to a CSA deck tech video and a tournament report kinda. With us we have Kevin who participated in a Cloud City Games tournament and actually won with CSA Weatherlight Captain uh, without Giganta. Welcome! Thank you for having me. A uh, pleasure to be here. Yeah, it, it was a very, very uh, great tournament. I uh, had a ton of fun. It was 32 players. That's a lot uh, of players. Three rounds. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a great time. Um, like I said, three rounds was single elimination for the first round. Second round was a little bit, a uh, little different. And then the final round was branched off of what happened in round two. So uh, it was a great tournament. Met a ton of fun people. Had a great time. Got to play with a lot of very good players. Uh, had a great experience overall. And how how did CSA perform for you? Like, so going into the tournament, I kind of just put a lot of different silver bullets into the deck. That way, if I need, I would needed to see anything, I was prepared for most decks. I, I wanted an out to most of the common combos, most of the common win cons. I figured the rule of law, the stacks version, was more suited towards something like that. Fast with getting a rule law effect into play, very effective, able to slow the game down just enough for me to, to win. So how many rule of laws do you actually play in the deck? And by the way, everybody, if you want to take a look at the deck, link in the description below of the video. Um, I play a good amount. Uh, it also depends on like what you would consider to be like the stacks, because there yeah. are cards in the deck like Archon, there are just Rule of Laws, Arcane Laboratory. I play as many as I can. So yeah, I'm on Arcane Laboratory, Deafening Silence, Possibility Storm, and I even kind of like include the Ristic Study, because not everyone wants to be feeding Ristic Study, not everyone wants to be feeding the fish. There's also other stacks pieces that are creatures, kind of like Esper Sentinel, and a really, really big one of the tournament that I used was Kataki. Yeah. And a lot of the rounds, Kataki wins games on their own. In the final round, my opponent went turn one Mystic Remora. I had a Gemstone Caverns, and I went second, and I I played Kataki on turn one, and then from there, the other player was on Trevish Krom, and the other player was on Korvold, so I figured Kataki was good going into that game no matter what. Mm. And when I talked to them after the game, that at Kataki actually turned them off from like three or four turns of playing. Yeah, that's a lot of value. Like the key I think with Cissé is to slow down the game a bit, just make your opponent struggle moving forward to gain time, so to say. Yes, uh, a way I like to think of the deck is mm -hmm. I'm not focused on winning, I'm focused on not losing. Ooh, that sounds strange. It's just how I um, want to move the deck forward, really, because taking enough turns, eventually you're going to get there. But you True. have to make sure that you don't lose to like the Turbo Nas deck super quick, because that is one of your big struggles. Yeah, but well, if you put like so many rule of law effects inside your deck, you're, you're going to make them work for it. Yes. Yeah. And the thing with Cissé is that she's she's super consistent. So just enough time, and you will get there eventually. Exactly. Yeah. Like you said, I'm, when you have that powerful of a tutor effect in your command zone, it's very strong, very good, very consistent. Yeah. Was there any like pod that you were scared of, like? Oh, this is uh, this is might be a trick when I might not win this one, so to say. Uh, pretty much every pod, because there was a Ooh. turbo nas at every table. Mm -hmm. So round one, I got really lucky. Probably would have lost if someone didn't forget that there was a Bloodseeker in play. So they misplayed for me to squeeze by round one. Mm. Bloodseeker is not usually a typical card people see, but there was one in play and it led to them dying by accident. Was it anything special about this live event? Like I was saying earlier, round one was single elimination. So <laughs> you had to win out of round one. Round two two people made it out of the remaining pods. So there was two pods left at that point because 32 divided by four is eight, which means two yeah. pods of eight. And then out of those two pods of eight, there has to be four people to go into the final round. Yeah. So the top oh. two players of each pod made it out instead, which could lead to weird, awkward complications. There are some pros and some cons. What happened? Wait, are the, the people that lost first round, the 32 players? Are they just playing one game and that's over? Yeah. Huh. There were a lot of just like people hanging out afterwards, just play, which was nice. Yeah. But like I said, I wish it wasn't just like single limb, but it was in a mall on a Sunday. So they have to close mm. early. So yeah. they can't go super late into the day. Yeah, I was guessing something like that because like in an, 
as a regular CDH tournament, how they are usually played out these days, they take like the entire day, or at least six yeah. hours or yeah. more. Because first they play 32, that becomes eight. Yep. So that's eight. two pods of four in each. Two pods of four, and then two uh, people from each one go together to make a pod of four. But that's not possible. There's only one winner in a pod of four in CDH. That's why it was very, very wonky and very weird. Okay. One person would win, and then the remaining three players would keep playing. Then oh, once when what? another person won, yeah, it was very, very awkward. <laughs> oh, so it became a free pod. Yes, yes. Did they restart then, the game, or did they just continue from the spot? They just kept going from where it was. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, so honestly, it was very weird. In CDH, that is actually kind of possible, because if someone just turned one fast Oracle consult, they haven't really done anything with yeah, the board state. Just keep they going. just leave. <laughs> yeah. So how would they solve this? So this is not, this is like my current wincon in CSA. So I have Emil, I have Derevian, there's a guy's cradle, so I have infinite mana, I have infinite arm taps, and I have infinite tap downs. I guess so eventually you would win, and then. Yeah, you, yeah that's the problem. You, you win eventually, but how would the tournament solve it? Because if you win eventually, and if you actually win by killing them one by one with commander damage, how would the tournament solve that? Whoever you killed last. Yeah, but that's that's wrong. Because then you have a choice yeah. of choosing who goes to the top four with you. So you, you just take it's the very weakest. Hard making. What happens if you accidentally wreck havoc during your win, so to say? Because if you go, the first player wins, goes forward, and then the second, the third player, then they fight in a free pod. What you could do as the first winner is that you could kill the person that you don't want to bring against you. Yes. Um, luckily with our, I didn't know. I don't know how the other pod went. Luckily with our pod and how it went is that we all, when the Kinnon player was going to win, they asked, "Is it okay with everybody if I bounce the board?" And everyone just agreed to it. So he said, "Okay, I'm just going to bounce the board instead of killing everybody one by one mm. by one." So he just bounced the board, uh, finaled for enough, and then was able to kill everybody at the same time. Mm. Then the rest of us just continued to play, and then I just so happened to take second in the pod, moving on to the finals. But how did they do that when they're all dead? How did they solve that? Like, did they regain the life that they lost by the attack? Um, we just announced that everybody's dead, and then we just keep going. So we, everyone just stays at the life total that they were in, and then they just continued playing the game as though they didn't die. So Kinan bounces the entire board state. All permanents goes up to their hands. Kinan calls final of devastation and kills everybody. Kinan walks away. He's now the winner. You need to find a second winner from the top three because everyone's life total is at zero. You, to continue the match, you need to rebound back everyone's life to where it were before Kinan killed them all. Yes, yes, that's exactly what happened. I don't think this is a great solution to something because th there are so many problems here that what if someone interacts with Kinnan and loses mana and interaction and then that affects their outcome. Like what you sometimes just do here is you just let the person win with and keep your interaction because yeah, you're gonna, that was, what you're going to um, do is just interact with the next person that's trying to win and then you're trying to win yourself. Person. Yeah. And that was something that we kind of all talked about before the game, actually, because okay. that it was a big, that was an issue that kind of dawned upon in everyone's head, like, well, what if I'm just playing to win second instead of first? Yeah. Because if everyone is going to try to interact with the person winning right now, but that one person sandbags, and then they're just going to wait till their turn to win because now they know no one has interaction. Yeah. And we kind of all agreed on just playing to take first. Okay. That is a that's a great thing to have in a social contract, but it's a very s risky thing. Yeah, it's very scary. <laughs> yeah, there is all there is always going to be players that just doesn't agree to that sometimes. So it kind of it worked out very well. It was just very awkward getting there. Yeah. What I'm most scared of is that people will like for example with Cisse or Nigella, Nigella going infinite combo steps can basically choose how they are going to die in turn order, so to say. Yes. Um, so you can sit and say, "Okay, I will I will kill the two strongest people I don't want to have in the top 4 and I will I will let the person that is uh, have a weaker deck against me just walk with me it becomes like king making so to say who's like gonna yeah. follow you 
that was also like an issue that I brought up because what if you're a mill deck? What if you just mill every one out? Who yeah. who wins in that scenario? Because I used to play Ashiok and I would just flicker Venser, bounce Ashiok, recast Ashiok, exile the top four cards of someone's library, bounce Ashiok, recast it. Mm. And so that became my question, like, what happens if I just exile everybody's library? Well, then everyone just loses in turn order, and the person to my right takes second. Yeah. And that could be kind of awkward. Yeah. But I do understand that they wanted to do it like this, just to save time, to make it possible. Yeah, like, in the end, CDH tournaments are very hard to run. And uh, even though I'm going to say this tournament structure sounds strange, and I can just see problems... But it's, you shouldn't, like, be scared to try out and experiment things. There were definitely some hiccups here and there, but overall the event did run very smoothly. Yeah, I think you get a very smooth event. Like an event organizer, it feels great running it like this. But yeah, I can just see unfair scenarios, so to say. One thing they could do is just restart with a free player pod, actually restart the entire game but with three players i think that that would probably be the best outcome yeah then there is no king making it's everyone has to reset from everything there is yeah. you can't king make you can't favor one person in any case cise how do you feel about her in the current meta and in the current power level of Grixis Ad Nauseum? Well, well i shouldn't all i shouldn't just say Grixis Ad Nauseum. we have we have a lot of different strange combos out there or commander decks out there we ourselves are strange combo decks <laughs> yeah yeah true i think she does do very well if you're able to establish your stacks pieces early enough and be able to slow everybody down i feel like you do fantastic but if you have a hard time establishing those stacks pieces resolving them having them in play the deck struggles so you get rushed down very easily but the longer the game goes the much better your odds become i found that the very key thing is he says speed or just i don't necessarily need card draw i just need a lot of mana so i can dump important cards from my hand into play and just establish that lock so i have a very big problem seeing like opposition agent so i actually run a lot of card draw um i play sig river cutthroat one of my favorites from forever ago uh and it's very easy to hit someone for someone loses three life all the time due to mana crypt you get to draw a card uh you get to punch someone with sisse you're drawing a card um, I've actually been looking into playing Rafine for connive triggers and being able to really... This guy? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, that guy. I've been thinking about yeah. playing him just so you can really start going through your deck. He's hard to answer. He has Ward 1. He has a very nice uh, mana cost for CC, actually, too. That's, like, yes, very desirable. Perfect. Yes. So it's three different colors. Very easy to tutor for as well. I like my idea. My ideal mana cost for the deck is to tutor for is three. Mm, yeah, I agree. Um, four, 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 the two. Haymakers. Two, I find, are, like, the really strong utility creatures. Three are the cards that are closing out the game, I believe. You know, when I think about it, I think I might actually try to add him to my deck as well because he's a very like he's doing exactly what cc is attacking a lot with her creatures for other tricks so to say yeah yeah and he's, uh. he feels like he plays straight into the cc game plan hmm. the only problem is that we don't really recur the graveyard at all so the cards you discard you're getting rid of there's, yeah but i think no that's kind of kind of fine because cc is a toolbox deck and we have a lot of cards that are good for various scenarios like you find your specific uh, counters like you said in the beginning of the video your goal is to try to stay alive you want to have those cards that are good so you can just discard cards you just don't need in this specific pod yeah the more i've been reading them the more i really really want to add them to my next list yeah and i mean you can play underworld breach in CC. That is true. I mean, you can you can literally play the typical, not typical, but something Grixis like, similar, so to say. I mean, that's the great thing about Sissa. You could kind of do Everything. whatever you want with it. <laughs> Everything. Yeah, kinda. But also, Underworld Breach is not a bad card. It's just like uh, that's a card you could throw into almost every deck, I think. And that's red, of course, but still. Yeah, yeah. Underworld Breach is. Uh... 
Red Yogg will, but yeah. probably even better. <laughs> I don't think it fits into your deck because you play like every R rule of law effect you can think of. I play two, yes. so I think I actually could include this thing. No, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We, we have a deck here going. What's the name of that elf, uh, Underworld Breach legendary guy? Uh, makes every legendary spell cheaper. You can exile two legendary cards from your graveyard and you can cost... Oh, I have thought of him as, as an option with Rafine. But like you said, if you really don't need graveyard recursion because no. you could just get rid of the cards you don't need. I do think Rafine will make it into my list in the future. There also is a card in the newest set that I actually really want to toy around with um, and have see what he can do as well. Uh, he's the blue-black legendary... Ah, uh, the Ertai. Eltai, yeah. He's amazing. I kind I of... I think he could do a lot because that stifles oracles. He can be a wing con with... Um, yeah. Emil. Infinite. Just destroy everything they have. You could blink him twice and then counter his own ability. So you could draw your library. Yeah. He is very, very cool. And I actually like like it a lot. I think Eretai is actually pretty much auto-included inside CC though. The it, ability to find very, a counter spell on good. a CC activation is... I think that's very important to have. That's, that, that feels like one of the things CC has been missing. The ability to just found a straight up counter spell. So you have a very interesting card. Sakashima the Imposter. I don't play this. Well, why do you play this? Uh, Sakashima is one of my favorite cards in my list because if my opponent plays a Dockside Extortionist, you could copy it, go find more things. I've won a lot of games off of people just not knowing that Sakashima's even a card. Yeah. When you try to win with, like... <laughs> not knowing that it, You try that's to win very... with a Rock and Leaf Caller. <laughs> uh, that is so typical Zisei. I mean, wait, was that actually a legendary that existed? I didn't know that. I guess yeah. you win. Yeah, I've heard that so many times. All the time. I absolutely love it in the way that you can just win on top of someone's Dockside Extortionist trigger. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it happens more often than you would think. Uh, yeah. You can also just copy very weird cards in the deck. Um, you could do Double Displacer Kitten, which is really, <laughs> really funny. Uh, nothing is ever dying at that point in time. I see a lot of reasons to play Sakashima the Imposter inside the deck. The reason I don't play Sakashima is because it's 4 CMC. And when you reach 4 CMC, CC needs to be a 5-5 five five to find this guy. And at that point, CC is usually already winning. When when CC is a 5-5 for me, I've pretty much won the game already. And my CC is being killed all the time these days. <laughs> I'm playing against I mean, people that, a... that know CC yeah. by heart. In, I don't get to surprise them anymore. So they're like, oh, you're not going to have a CC. You're not going to have a CC. <laughs> so Sakashima will be a, a Sakashima in the 99. Just like every other commander deck out there for me, I think. Why do you like CC? Like... What's the appeal of playing this commander for you? Being able to to find answers to any kind of deck. Um, I yeah. play Anafenza to counter Protein Hulk, or yeah, Protein Hulk decks. I play uh, Campbell because Ad Nauseum is so popular. I play, you get to, pl I play Linvala, Linvinia. Um, all of your tutor cards, all the cards you get to see are all good against various win conditions and various cards like even if sis a four four you could stop the thos's oracle combo yeah um, if they cast thos's oracle in response you activate sis a they could either take the chance and cast their demonic consultation or if they let sis a resolve you just get the teferi and then they can't respond to their thos's oracle trigger anymore the creature will resolve trigger goes on the stack stack resolves um so you have answers to all the very popular decks, um, and I feel like that's being able to have answers to everything, being able to be that toolbox deck that isn't very popular in many formats. Yeah, she's very really... unpopular. It's very rare that you find CC players, actually. Like, you see a lot of Venota players, you see a lot of... There's a lot of... Like, if, you, if you're gonna play stacks in CDH, CC is not a choice. Not usually. Being able to be that toolbox stacks mm. deck, I feel is just good in any meta you get to just randomly walk into. Yeah, it feels like she can play in every sort of meta really well. Yes, 
And I feel like the silver bullets definitely help with that. They're getting so much better. It's incredible <laughs> how strong she's becoming. Like yeah. I, Every set I that comes out, she gets something new. Yeah. In any case, Kevin, thank you for coming here and sharing your expertise about CC. I mean, I'm doing a lot of videos about CC, but it's always good to have someone else here also talk about what they discovered and learned and the thoughts they have. So it's just not my input all the time. Thank you very much for having me. I uh, love the deck. I've uh, been having a ton of fun with it, ton of success with it in, our, in my locals. It was great to talk to you. Take care, everybody. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.